Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I am just coming on here with a super short tutorial. I got an email today from a lady that I met through YouTube and she asked me if I would help her with this problem she's having. She's trying to do something in Inkscape and it's just not cooperating. So I'm going to do a short tutorial to show her just how I would approach this issue. Now what she's trying to do is she's trying to have a picture and then center some words over the picture. At least that's what I understand that she's trying to do. If this isn't what you're trying to do, Marilyn, let me know and I'll do another tutorial. All right, so I just Googled praying hands and I thought this was really pretty. So I just dragged this to my desktop. Then I'll close that out and I'll open Inkscape. Now this is how Inkscape opens for me. And I have a somewhat newer version, 1.0.1, I believe. I'm on a Mac. Yours might not open exactly like this, but this is how mine opens. So what I like to do, because there's panels that are going to pop up over here, but on this version, for some reason, they don't come up automatically. The way I get them to come up is, I have two ways. I can either just nudge this over, and there they are. Or let me close it. I'll show you another easy way. Once Inkscape's open, I go to File, Document Properties, and as soon as I do that, they show up over here as well. Now in this case, I'm going to assume that she would print this out on an 8.5 by 11 sheet. So I'll select that, and it changed the size of my document. So even if you don't need to change the size of your document, if you're having a hard time getting these panels to come up, try just to pretend like you're going to change it and see what happens. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just drag my picture over and then I just always use the default settings and I say OK. So here it is right here. Now I'm going to assume that she would want this quite a bit bigger. And she can make it any size she wants, but I'm going to make it quite a bit larger. Now the proportions are not locked, so if I drag it and I don't drag it perfectly this way, the proportions are going to be messed up. So I need to lock it right here. Then to keep the proportions the way they are, I have to drag it from a corner. Because even though it says they're locked, you can still undo them by dragging from the side, the top, or the bottom. So to take advantage of this locked feature, you have to drag from a corner. Okay, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit by hitting the shift and the plus sign. Now that's a gorgeous picture, but I think it'd be hard to see the text on top of it. So I want to change this by decreasing the opacity. With the picture selected, and if it's not selected, just go right here to this select tool, then click on it. Then I go to fill and stroke, and I'm going to slide the opacity until I think it looks good. All right, so I want it to be faint enough that you can see the text, but dark enough that you really see what it is. So we're gonna try that. Now here comes the part that Marilyn was having an issue with. She was putting her text on there and she couldn't align it. So I'm gonna go right here to this A, that's the text tool, click on it, then I'm gonna click right here. I can move my writing later, so it's not super important where you put it, but for now I'll put it there. And then I'm just going to start typing the phrase. And it was pray about it as much as you think about, and I think she had the word it down here, period. Now notice, right now this is right justified, and that's because of this setting right here. So if I click on the text alignment, and I say center it, now it's centered down the middle, or I can click on it and go up to left justify, and it's right there. So I want to go down to centering in the middle, then let me move that over the hands. And I can tell my hands are still too dark. Let's just decrease that opacity. This part is not anything she asked me to do, but it's bothering me, so I'm going to turn that down. Okay. 
Now she was using a different font. So let me go back up here to text, text and font, or you can just select it over here. And she was using sans serif. And honestly, I'm not even sure how you pronounce this. <laughs> I pronounce it sans serif. So I'll click on it and then I'll say apply. All right, so that's probably way too big. With it locked, I can either drag it or notice the font size changed. Maybe I just say I want a font size of 1.0, click apply, and it makes it smaller again. Okay, so that's one way that you could center it. Now I think this needs to be a lot bolder. So from this point, I would go path, object to path, object, ungroup, path, union. And the reason I would do those three steps is to make it a true path that I can provide an outset to. Now an outset just makes these letters more bold without making them a lot larger. So you can make them bigger by stretching it, but they're still not really any more bold. So let's go back down. To get the outset, with it selected, you can go to path and outset. It made a little bit larger, or I can click on the shortcut, which on my Mac is the command in the right parentheses. I'm clicking on this. I've clicked on it six times, seven times, and see how it makes it more bold without getting it a lot larger. And I like the way that looks better. Okay, so that's one way you could tackle this problem. The other way is, let's just go ahead and type on here, pray about it as much as you think about it. Now, I don't have the words in the right place, but that doesn't matter for this. All right, so in this case, I'm still gonna go ahead and change my font. So with the words selected still, I'll click on the sans serif and I'll say apply. Now that's too large. So for me, I'm just gonna drag it smaller. Again, you could change it over here. Let's go back to 1.0, click on apply, and it's smaller. Now right now, notice it's right justified, and she wanted it to be centered in the middle. So this is another way you can do it. It's just doing it backwards. So first thing I'll do is go to path, object to path, object, ungroup, then I'm going to pick each line and go path union, path union, and the bottom line, path union. Now what that's done is it's made it three separate items so I can select all three. Now I can just use the align tool over here and say center those. So I got to the same place, just two different ways. Now if I still wanna make this bolder, first of all, I'm gonna go up here and I'm just gonna union all three of those so it's one. And then I'm gonna use that same path outset. You can do it on the keyboard like that or it's just faster to do the shortcut, which is your command and your right parentheses. And that got a lot bolder. Now she might've wanted the words down here. I'm not really sure, but these two processes will work regardless of where you want the words. Oops. I meant to move the words. So hopefully this has been helpful, Marilyn, and anyone else that would like to learn Inkscape. And until my next video, bye-bye.